Last week I took a trip to the island's emergency room and we got started on a cracked wind vane project. This week we're getting the wind vane ready for testing and we both take trips to the hospital. Just on the way to Cancun doctor's office. We're having so much fun. Yay. A little bit of medical, medical tourism should be interesting. Hopefully it's not interesting. Hopefully it's totally boring. My new sandals broke immediately. Well, one of them broke. So the moral of the story is only use old sandals with your own string to make them. I'm walking to the fancy hospital with no shoes on. We've dropped all our bucks on medical costs this month. Not that medical care is so expensive in Mexico. Between my appointment and tests, it was very affordable at about $160. And Robbie needing a course of antibiotics came to a grand total of $35. Anyways, in the wind vane world, we started by attaching arms to the wind vane with an epoxy pour. If we can find drill bits to clamp into the wind vane body, then we'll do that too. The prettiest epoxy job. Robbie needed to visit the hospital because his ear was hurting after swimming so much. I needed to repair the makeshift repairs that he did while I was on the exam table earlier. This was definitely the wrong string to use though. Something smoother and softer is much more comfortable on your feet. But this string would keep the flip-flops on my feet for today. This design has kept flip-flops on my feet for years, only using bowline and stopper knots. I ended up switching this rope out for a softer one that we had on board the boat, but this would do for the afternoon. It's so nice hanging out with my doggo on a peaceful Caribbean beach. It was time to get water from the fuel dock again, but this time leaving the dinghy with the anchor in place. Oof, the dinghy's full of water from rain. So you have the dinghy attached to the end of our chain. And 
we're free. The field dock is always telling us that we can't buy their water from them. We moved closer to the far end, and that seemed to make them happier. And then one day, a familiar sailboat entered the bay here at Isla Mujeres. It was Vintas, one of the boats that Robbie grew up on. Aboard, our friends from Puerto Aventuras and Tony, who gave us the wind vane. Just scooping and tearing chunks out of it. Robbie returned from a fishing trip with enough tuna to share with us and our neighbors. You call this sashimi? Kind of. I'm gonna make it like a ceviche type thing. Make a capacho tuna, and I'm gonna put some olive oil, some lemon. And despite multiple ear infections, Robbie and I went into the water again, this time to look for lobster. The season just opened up and we heard about some hiding spots that they like. After catching some dinner, we went to check out one of the wrecks that remains only partially submerged in a shallow part of the anchorage. We didn't take this cute little arrow crab with its beautiful iridescent blue lines home to eat though. Right now we're just gonna have put them we're gonna fry them up in a little oil in a skillet with some garlic. Which then we're going to use, we're not going to eat them like that unless you want to eat them. Right. 
clean my lobster. Juices. This isn't very like, I'm not very beautifully. salt on them. Hmm. We made sure to get into every edible part. Difficult this one. Choco supervising the cleaning of the... Are we doing an okay job, Choco? Questa parte, la, te, la, la, ti, ti do un martello con cosa per rompere perché è pieno, pieno di carne. It was time to epoxy the cracked wind vane body. I wanted to fill it the hard angles before laying down the fiberglass cloth. Then together we prepared and lay down several layers carefully tapping and squeezing out all the potential bubbles and air pockets. And then we cover that all in two-part paint. Your favorite, no? Fiberglass sanding. And I'm, really doing happy. I'm really happy to be doing this on the boat, too. We could have tried to bring this to land, but... The pony weighs 500 kilos and we can't cap. Very fun either. The well, daily choice between various fun things. We measured the distance between the two attachment points, and Robbie began to drill holes into the transom. It's going to be underneath there. Now we would only need to hoist the wind vane up with a halyard and place the arms into the attachments. which, of course, was not straightforward. I used my body weight to fit the not entirely straight pipes into their slots. No, there won't be. There's no way. There is no way that's not gonna hold. You'd have to rip the back. Of the, our transom have to be coming off of our boat. More, at least more. Okay. Okay. I, I, we do have to put some support for the vibration. Very vibrating, eh? Not very, but 
I mean, it's the arms are so long that it vibrates. Like you can see it. Yeah. This is when the blade is straight, and there's too few teeth this way. And we want the weight to be at the bottom and everything. Okay, so if I want it. to be I can see that it's not straight the blade it's bent that way so if I want the blade to be straight when this is in the water which is like that <sighs> stay tuned for next video to see now what. Thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you for all your support. And a big shout out to our friend Sean who made sure we continue to have the camera gear to make these movies. We will see you next video.